General Philip Breedlove has planned many of those responses. Former Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, a man we turn to at times like this. Uh, General, your analysis. Well, Leland, thanks for having me on board. Um, I think uh, I wish this had happened three or four days ago. I think we should have hit hard and fast. Um, I'm glad that we have finally started an action. I think there's lots of dust to settle over what we actually struck. I've now heard uh, three different characterizations of how many targets we hit. I heard today seven targets, four in Syria, three in Iraq. You said about a dozen. I think the administration is reporting 85. I, I think that that's just a misnomer the way it's being captured. It's, it's 85 designated mean points of impact on seven to 10 target areas. So I'm sure the language will clean up over the days and what we struck will clean up over the days. I think the most important thing to talk about though, and I'm sure you'll take me there, is this what will change Iran's mind? All roads start in Iran and all roads lead back to Iran. And we'll have to ask ourselves, have we done enough? I, I'll get you to that point in a minute. Um, you're, you're right to point out the differences in the language. Uh, we have them highlighted here. It was uh, seven target areas, and, and I think you pointed out 85 separate targets. I guess every building Central Command uh, counts as that, 125. They said separate precision guided munitions. That was the language from Central Command. That uh, means more to you. Just in terms of laying out what I think is, is important at this point to, to step back, um, we still have the most powerful military in the world and the ability to send B-1 bombers uh, from the United States nonstop over Syria uh, and Iraq, hit all the targets and turn around and come back home uh, is a pretty impressive one. What do you make of the fact that these were B-1 bombers uh, rather than, say, using uh, any facilities, uh, uh, you know, weapons from uh, the U.S. Navy, uh, carrier strike groups, or using fighter jets uh, that we have on the ground, say, in Qatar? So I uh, love my fighter jets. As you know, I flew the F-16 for over two-thirds of my career. But uh, a fighter jet can deliver extremely precise weapons, but it will deliver two, four, or eight at the most, depending on the platform. Uh, the B-1, I'm not going to put the whole number out there because it may still, still be classified, but the B-1 carries much much more uh, capability. And, and the really exciting thing about having a B-1 on station is not only does it carry all manner of bombs from the small ones to the big ones, but they can all be independently targeted. They don't, like in World War II, pass over a tar target and drop off all their bombs. These are independently precision-guided weapons that hit these DMPIs designated mean points of impact accurate. One thing that I've always admired about you and I've enjoyed having you on the program because of this is I have never been able to tell where your politics are. Um, you're a military man. You've always been uh, willing to call balls and strikes. You're, you were appointed uh, as Supreme Allied Commander by President Obama. If that means anything to the viewers, they can decide. This would be the question, right? Because as we pointed out, all of the targets are in Syria and Iraq and there is reporting that the the administration has telegraphed both publicly and privately to the Iranians that they're not going to hit inside Iran. Is it possible to deter Iran from the, these continued attacks without hitting Iran itself? So I think we have recent history which we can refer to, and that would be Ukraine and Russia. We told Russia at the beginning of that conflict that we were not going to let Ukraine bomb inside uh, Russia with our kit, and we have essentially built sanctuary for Russia all around Ukraine. And so I ask you, have we deterred Mr. Putin in Ukraine? I think the clear answer is no. We're going to have to hit what Iran values most. Now, whether that's in Iran or around Iran, I think there are some targets out there that would be proportional, and that's a term we use when we pick targets in, in things like this. We want to have a proportional response. There are those targets out there.
You think about when this happened, which was overnight Friday into Saturday morning. Friday night is the weekend uh, and the holy days uh, in the Middle East, as you well know. Um, we think about the people who are, are really running these organizations for the uh, Iranians. Uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, uh, the Badar organization, uh, Hadi Al-Mari, and then uh, Al-Shabaab Al-Haqiq. Um, the reporting is that so many of the leadership decamped after the three Americans were killed because they realized once we kill Americans, there's going to be a response. Uh, how, how is it that we figure out, and I think you make a point, that there are valuable targets to Iran. These guys are very valuable to Iran. How do we figure out whether or not we basically blew up a bunch of empty warehouses with some old artillery shells in them, or we blew up things that actually matter? Well, the good news is we have some extremely talented target analysts that that's their job. We call it battle damage assessment. We know what we aimed at. We know the way the bomb approaches the target. We know what it should look like afterwards. We look for secondary explosions, all manner of things that indicate we had success. It's much harder, much harder to determine if any of this leadership or the personnel were involved in these uh, targets. And, and as you said, we gave them a lot of warning. So I don't think it's likely that we probably struck targets that were densely populated. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.